I'm excited about today. We have a, a good message that's going to be, um, that we're going to be going through, a good set of scripts that we're going to be going through, and um, nothing of me, it's just the Bible, and the Bible's pretty fascinating, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. We finished up last week with the whole God swears to keep his promises, and that's, that's all done and finalized. And, and so while we're in between um, message series, like the longer ones, we always do these micro series, and, and today is one of those. And, and I usually call these things simply profound, but I'm just going to like reduce it to the word simple. Do you all appreciate simplicity? There's enough complex in our lives. I don't think that we need to come to church and have things to be more complex. And so um, we're just going to land on, on, a, on a set of words. Um, today's word is actually the word word, and uh, it's going to be good stuff. And uh, I think that we're going to come away with some, some powerful truths for our life. Um, and we, we've done enough praying today. Uh, Jesus is ready to speak to us. I hope that you're ready for him to speak to you. So go ahead and grab your Bible. If you didn't bring one, there should be one tucked away in a chair near you. And um, those that are in the chairs, you know, if you brought your own Bible, mark that one all to pieces. And with the one that belongs to the church, then you can do what you want with it. And um, the next person that reads it will see your notes. Um, but we're going to turn, I want you all to turn to John chapter 1, and uh, just to help if you're not familiar with where it's at, it's in the, towards the back of the Bible, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is where we're going to land the fourth gospel, gospel of John, and um, the word, word, is going to be what we look at today, and, um, and so I'm, I'm ready for it. First service was, was great time, but I'm ready for this service. Are you all ready? Good. We live in a day where, where words are a bit careless. We're a bit careless with them. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but we have a president who needs to have his phone taken away at times because there's words that he uses that he ought not use, right? Is that too, too not appropriate? If, if just, it is what it is. Um, how many of you know somebody that is careless with their words, aside from who I just mentioned? Okay. How many of you are married to that person? No hands, okay. Um, we, we live in this day and age where we're careless with our words. We don't really take into consideration the weight of our words. And, and you know, I'm sure all of us, if we've lived more than a few days that we were able to talk, sometimes we have spoken words and you just can't bring them back and tuck them in, right? How many of you have ever had one of those moments where it was just out there? and the damage was done. Um, I find that when I'm tired, I am a lot more loose-lipped. Um, and so if you wanna like, know how I really feel, just get me really tired and, and just ask me about things and it'll be kind of like this, this gamut is unloaded and so I try to be rested as much as possible, um, especially Saturday night because I don't wanna just say whatever on a Sunday morning, right? Words are important. There's uh, something that I post on Facebook, just to get a little help from, from uh, whoever read it. There's a, a section, I, I think I was just sitting in my office last week, and I just started writing down some thoughts about words. And it's not poetic or anything, um, and it, it wasn't meant to be like crafty or anything like this. I don't know why I just opened up Facebook. Why am I doing that? Um, <laughs> Here we go. This is, this is why I wrote about words. And then there were several others that, that contributed as well. I was just curious about the purpose of words. Words communicate. Words are either spoken or written. Words are meant to be heard. Words are meant to be read. They carry meaning. Words give instruction. With words, we are able to express. We express ourselves. With words, we can encourage. We can uplift. But words can also crush confidence. With words, we can convey love. With words, we can convey hate. With words, we worship. With words, we, we, we use words for praise. And out of that same mouth, we use words for profanity. We uh, use words that can be harsh. Words can be helpful. Words can be healing. Words require responsibility. So essentially, we are responsible for what we say. James says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. It's in our words. I have found that to be true. There are things that I am insecure about. Writing is one of them because of 
words that were spoken to me by some English teachers along my educational experience. So words have this profound, um, either they can scar you in a good way, or they can scar you in a way where you always look at those words, those lashings, and, and you reduce yourself to the words that have been spoken over you rather than by the words that Jesus would speak over you. It's, it's powerful. Words are powerful. Now, the reason why words are powerful is because it's, it's, it's verbiage that, that give, I guess, where we help other people know what's going on with our mind. And that's, that's a tricky thing. It's the powerful thing of our mind. Our minds are, I, I try to be as simple as possible, but the brain is quite complex, right? It's amazing what we're all taking in right now, colors, senses, and all of this kind of stuff. It's what we hear. And then when we have opportunity to speak, I'm amazed at how undisciplined I can be with my words. So words are powerful. We're going to look at unarguably the most powerful word. And it's not a word, it's actually a person. Capital W word. So I'm excited about this this morning. We're going to look at the word. So y'all, John chapter 1? Okay. This is how it reads. John chapter 1, we're going to, um, we're, we might sneak all the way down to verse 14 by the end of the morning, but for now we're just going to read the first five, five verses that we come to. So it reads like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, through him, through the word, through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness, or, or the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now, I love how John writes. There's, there's, there's this epiphany that has, has registered in his mind, and he pins his thoughts, and they're so powerful, powerful for us to understand. And, um, and what he's doing is his verbiage here is paralleling to Genesis 1. In the beginning. So we're going to pick this apart little by little. It's going to be a lot of fun. I promise you, y'all didn't come into English class today, but it's powerful when we start to look in the different tenses and the different objects and everything of what's being said here. It's so powerful and so rich for us and crucial for us to tailor our life to what these verses are saying. These verses are fundamental, they're foundational, they're basic for, um, and we'll see along the way that, that some other religions have tweaked these verses to suit their preferences. And so it's very very, very foundational and fundamental to us. So, here we go. Y'all ready? I don't know why I keep asking if you're ready, because if you weren't ready, you'd just leave. All right. So, um, in the beginning, the beginning, not a beginning, but the beginning. Even right here in those first three words, different people, depending on where they stand with God or their belief in God, have a, a struggling with those words. Like how, like what's the beginning? Well, we have here, we just have in the beginning. It's not a beginning of some other thing happening. This is the beginning, the beginning of time. That's the beginning that John is talking about. In that beginning, the only beginning that can be called a beginning of all time, in that beginning was the Word. Now, the next three words that we just read was the word is also tricky. Because the word was doesn't just mean in the way that we talk about an event that happened. Like, man, that party was awesome. It's, it's an event that took place that now, sorry, that now we just reflect on, right? It's, it's a reflection. But what this verse is saying is, in the beginning was and is the Word. That's significant. So was and is. It's, it's, it's 
if, I hope I do this right, present perfect is the tense. It's, 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 it, it was then and now. That's crucial for us to understand. So in the beginning was not a word, but the word. The. Was and is the word. Jehovah's Witness right there have adjusted this to where it says, in the beginning was a word. And then everywhere that we see the, thereafter, they substitute it with a. Especially John 1, 1, 1, 2. They, they, they swap out the with a because they see Jesus as just a prophet, not the son of the living God. So the whole premise of their belief structure is tweaked in these verses. You see how paramount words are. The versus a. We don't just serve a God. We serve the God. We don't just live for a word. We, we live and receive the word. Paramount. In the beginning was the word. The word wasn't created because the word through the word, everything else has been created. So the word wasn't manufactured by God because the word already existed. We read this as we go on. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. It doesn't say and God made the word. The word was with God. In the beginning, before anything was, the word was with God. I know if, if this is too fundamental for you, just hang on. But I'm, I'm one that I need to land on these things for my own mind's sake. The word was with God. The word was and is with God. They're together. And the word was God. I don't know about your Bible, but my Bible has a capital W every time the word word is mentioned. To the readers at this time, to those that would be reading these, um, this would be mind-bending for the people of this day and age. They're just very intrigued and very perplexed by what John is writing here. Just in case there's anything that needs to be cleared up in verse 2, he says, he was with God in the beginning. Now he gives... Um, name to the word by saying a he. It's personified. And as we keep going through Scripture, it's, he personifies it even more by giving the word the name Jesus. So he was with God in the beginning. Let there be no confusion. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, through the word, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Nothing that was made, or wait, without him, nothing was made that has been made. Through him. So John is calling him by name. He's saying the word. Now, if we go to Genesis chapter 1, if we go right to the very first book and first chapter, first verse of the Bible, it says, in the beginning. And then we go into this progression of, of what took place in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, it says, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. And God, the word, the, 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 the Hebrew word for God there is plural. The Trinity, the triune God. And God said, in the beginning was the word. God said, let there be light. This is so profound to me. It was crazy. So here we go. I just lost my spot. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. We, we might live in a day and age where there's new stuff all the time, but the stuff originated with the originator. 
okay? There, there's, there's stuff that's being made with material that's already existed. So all of this stuff, everything that we have was made through him. We have the creative ability to, to tweak and maneuver. I would even use the word manipulate stuff to what we, we can fashion it however we want to. But we didn't come up with it. The stuff. It was created through him. Everything. Now what's interesting to me is that he didn't start with people. He didn't start with trees. He starts with light. Watch this in John. Verse 4. In him, in him being the word, in, in him, in the word, in the word was life. Not just was past tense. In the word was and is life. Sidestep real quick. Did you know that what the Bible says of itself? That the Bible is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword? Do you think that's still in effect today? Is it, does the word ever convict anybody? Does the word ever encourage anybody? Is it living and active in your life? Just saying. It's just saying about itself. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. So wait a minute. There's a lot to connect here, and I know the whole message series, the, today's message is all about being simple, but let's see the domino effect here. In the beginning was the Word. The Word, here in verse 4, the Word was life. And that life that was in the Word, that life is the light, not for all mankind, but of all mankind. I sat at my whiteboard for 30 minutes looking at the word of. Because in my head, I thought it would make more sense if it read this way, in him was life, and that life was the light for all mankind. It seems to read more sensible in that way. So I was just staring at it like, what does it mean that, it, that it's the light of all mankind? Now fortunately, I will, I will always value and appreciate this relationship, this relationship that I have with uh, Pastor Bill Maurer. Uh, if y'all don't know them because you're new here, they were pastors here for 27 years. They come here, they're here right now. He just happened to swing by my office and we camped out in my office for an hour going through these verses. Now I'm not going to get everything that was iterated, iterated today because it was, it was just a brilliant conversation. But I, I, I pointed at that word and I said, Pastor Bill, I'm having a problem with this two-letter word. I don't get why it says of rather than for. How crazy is this that people, all people who have breath in their lungs, blood is pumping through their veins, how cool is this that the word is the life and the, that life is the light of all mankind. And so just the very fact that per, somebody, a person is alive, they don't know Jesus yet, but they are still a reflection of the truth of God. Just by being alive. That should cause us to look at everybody differently. Not with bias, not with prejudice. Every person was made through the word. If you got prejudice, you better kick it to the curb. If you've got racism, you better kick it to the curb. It's, it's, it's bogus. We are all, I, I want to get passionate about this one, we are all made through him. All. All might not know him, but all were made through him. And the very fact that they are alive is <laughs> the life is a light of all mankind. You can't even help yourself if you don't know Jesus. You're still a reflection of the living God. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. You're a reflection of the living God. That's powerful. In him, in him the word was life, and that life was the light was and is 
the light of all mankind. Now, this next verse is really, um, really fun. The light shines in darkness. In, in not just in, I was thinking about this too, because every word is very intentional with, 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 uh, with John. The light shines, the light shines in the darkness. Just as poignant as the light is, I have to assume that the darkness is significant. Now, I know that in the way it's translated in, from, from Greek to what, how it's been translated throughout the years, the may be a very minor word in some, some places in Scripture, but I would have to think that the light shines in the darkness is pretty significant. It's not just a dark corner. It's, it's, it's going to the, the origin of darkness. It goes to that place. Light, light, his light goes there. And the darkness has not overcome it. Other translations would say this, and the darkness has not understood it. The darkness has not wrapped its thinking, its understanding, its comprehension. It can't comprehend, doesn't know what to do with the light. So if the darkness doesn't know what to do with the light, let's switch that a little bit. I guarantee you that the light knows what to do in darkness. The light's just going to light it up. Right? Now if we keep going down that vein... How many of you walk differently when your bedroom light is turned off? We have a piano bench in our bedroom at the end of our bed. We don't have a piano in our bedroom, just a piano bench. And there are more times, more often than not, our, I'm, we, I'm leaving the bedroom at different times in the morning because I have my workout routine. And so I'm going in the morning, I'm trying to remember the layout of our bedroom. And when I get too confident, I start cutting corners. Why, tell me, answer me this question. Why is it when we stub our toes that we don't hit our big toe that can like take blunt force trauma? Why is it our pinky toe? That has to be a scientific study, right? You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's not like the big toe that can be like, oh, that kind of hurt. It's the pinky one that just goes, and there's like breaks, and you're just like, seriously? It's a lot more dramatic than that. So anyways, we walk differently. I digress. We walk differently when the light's off because we don't see what's around us. Did you know that I just defined our soul when we choose to not let the light of Christ light up our soul? Can't see what's there. If the light is not on in our soul, we don't know how gross we are, but we also don't know how good we are. We don't know how much of a child of God we are. There's just, there's just everything that we're not seeing when we don't let the life, which is the light of all mankind, to be lit up in us. Motel 6, Motel 6, you remember that commercial? We'll leave the light on for you. That should be the theme of our soul. We'll leave the light on for you, human. Hey, leaving the light on because you need to see yourself. I'm leaving the light on. That's really important for us. This is paramount for us to understand that the light shines in darkness. The darkness does not know what to do with it. They're like, ah, oh, I don't know what to do with this. And I can't continue to be dark so long as there's light here. Did you know that the Bible says that everything hidden is going to be exposed? I mean, God already sees our attempts at creating nooks and crannies to hide our stuff, y'all, he already sees it. Oh, I just, I'm just going to tuck 
I'm going to cut this right here. Just make a door right here. I'm just going to cut this right here. I don't, I don't want him to see it. And I'm going to close the door. It's going to be a metal one with chains on it. And he can't, he can't see it. I just want to tell you, right now, he sees all of us. Why? Because through him, all things were made. I want, I want my light on all the time. Many scholars, do you know what they call that? They call that discipleship. I thought that was fascinating. And, and this, is, this is how it works out. So John is, is paralleling Genesis. I know I'm kind of going all over the place. John is paralleling Genesis. When God said, when he spoke the word, let there be light, <laughs> The light and, and darkness were separated, and there was day one. Here's what they say. Light brings order. Because light is what started order and brought order to the chaos in Genesis. Genesis 1 says it was without form. It was just kind of like this just stuff. Nothing was formed. Then light happened. And, and from that point on, chaos shaped up and got in order. Remember, uh, some of y'all may not have been here a couple weeks ago, but there's a word that I, I, I learned just for a message. It was called synecdoche. Really weird word, but it's, a, it's an important grammatical word where something really small encompasses something really big. The example that was thrown around was was we throw the word nom for Vietnam. Everything that took place in Vietnam, we just throw the word nom at it. That's synecdoche. Not that creation is anything small, okay? I'm not diminishing all of creation. But there is a parallel that happens in the context of creation that also happens within the context of our own soul. That when, when the light of Christ comes into our heart and our mind and our soul, and the light is turned on, the rest of our life may still be chaos. But in our heart and in our soul, things are brought to order. And when we choose the light, for the light to shine in us, again, because I live in the same planet that you do, I know that when I walk out there, there are things that I set in motion on my own that cause chaos, but I also know that there's people that I live around that cause chaos. I can still be rest assured that what's going on on the inside has order. That's the importance of letting the light of Christ not just shine on you, but get all up in you. And here's the fascinating part about that. And I say this all the time. The light being on and things coming into order in you isn't even about you. You're just more and more becoming a reflection of him. And so then people are like, you know what? There's all this chaos going on, but you seem to be at peace. What's wrong with you? There's some malfunction in your brain that you must be walking in peace. How can that happen? How can that be? You have patience that doesn't make sense. You, this person has, has, has been nasty to you, and yet you still hold hope towards them. I would have gotten over them by now. What's wrong with you? I got, I got this, this light on in me, and I'll just be honest with you. If it were up to me, I might choose the, way that, the things that you choose, but that light kind of helped me see things different, so I don't choose what I want to do. I would choose what he wants me to do. That, that's the premise of my life now. Listen, here, here's a reality. There's going to be... Um, how can I say this delicately? People are boneheads. We, we live around people 
that are boneheads, and they're going to be boneheaded. I am one. Not intentionally. I am an innocent-hearted bonehead. But I, here's one of the lights that have flipped on in my heart. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's a light switch in my soul. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And so what do I want to do? I want to walk in humility because I want to walk in his grace because I'm a bonehead and I need people to be gracious towards me. That's, that's my preference. I can't make them be gracious, but that's my hope. Do you see the importance, the, the importance of letting the light and life of Christ to be on in you? All of everything that we just talked about, in the beginning was and is the Word. Paramount. There's some verses that we, I'm going to pass over all of them. Uh, I'm going to pass over six, or not six, but yeah, six. And um, let me pick up in, in nine. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, this is still talking about Jesus and, and the word, the world did not recognize him. He came in to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, not of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God, of God. 14, this is where John just, if we live in that day, our philosophical and theological minds would have just been imploding by verse 14. The Word, the Word, not a Word, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We've seen His glory the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. This whole Christian faith is so scandalous to so many people because to the the person who doesn't know God, wrapping their head around God becoming man, becoming one of us, becoming one of us makes no sense. But that's what he did. John also penned the verse that was very, very popular, and maybe it's popular today and I'm just not aware of it. John 3, 16. After he's just spelled out all of this, John also says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever should believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. What is the, 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 the root of all of that? For God so loved us. Y'all, I'm so thankful for the Word. I'm so thankful for the Word, capital W Word, Word. Word? (laughs) On the connection card, if you're new to Family Fellowship, um, we, we do this every week where we help process the message. There's some things that God is speaking, has been speaking to us this morning. And, and the reason why we use this is just to help us put, put some words to what he's saying to us. I, I know I put on there my takeaway, but can I, do, can I give us some direction? The light shining in darkness is such a profound thought as it, as it, as it is attached to discipleship. It's so profound to me. We, you, choose whether that light is on in your soul or not. 
And so rather than just saying my takeaway, I, I want to I kind of hone our focus into answering this statement. What's one thing that you can do this week to keep the light on in your soul? What's just one thing? Maybe some of, some of you in here need to write out some stuff like, you know what, the light hadn't been on in a while. I just need to write that out. I need to acknowledge that. This isn't counseling, by the way. It's not like, well, the first step is to, to acknowledge it. It's, you know, we're not going to walk you through counseling or anything. What, what's one way that you can leave the light on this week?